Okay, <clears throat> so Tom Main, Thomas Main, uh, one of the, the interesting architects today, no doubt. So he was born, uh, he's based, uh, he was born in uh, 1944 on, on, on January 19th. He's based in Los Angeles. In 1972, Main helped found the Southern California Institute of Architecture, that is SciArc, uh, where he's a trustee and the coordinator of the Design of Cities postgraduate program. Since then, he has held teaching positions at SciArc the California State Polytechnic University Pomona, uh, called uh, Polymo Pomona, and the University of California, Los Angeles. He's principal of Morphosis Architects, his architectural firm in Culver City, uh, California. I found this uh, description of him uh, as being the architect of confrontation. It was me who put the question mark. But uh, this, uh, this description uh, was published in, in an essay, in an article. That, uh, and uh, I found on Wikipedia this uh, uh, short text about a controversy. Early in his career, Maine became notorious for having an abuse, abusive temper, screaming at clients. <laughs> Can you believe it? None of my clients would recommend me, he later admitted. In late summer 2002, Maine was asked by New York Magazine to contribute a proposal for the World Trade Center, uh, well, for the World Trade Center site, where recovery and cleanup had just ended. In discussing his plan, Maine told an interviewer his thoughts about the September 11th attacks. I quote, I have no empathy. It doesn't make me weep. I could make a better case for justifying the terror than the other way around." End of quotation. Now, what do you make of this? On one hand, screaming at clients. This is very unusual because, uh, because usually our architects, of course, are rather servile towards clients because they want the commission. So it, it, it it, 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 it takes uh, nerve, it takes, uh, you know, an attitude to be able to scream at the client. Second, even more outrageous, uh, this uh, important architect and well-known uh, personality had the, 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 yes, the audacity to not weep for uh, what happened on September 11th, although he was and is an American, North American citizen. More than that, he said, I could make a better case for justifying the terror than the other way around. So in my opinion, I don't know him personally, but in my opinion, Tom Main is a, is a, is a, a temperamental, courageous and sincere man. I think he's an honest man. He is maybe an angry man. Maybe he was an angry young man at one point. Maybe he still is. But it's, uh, if this controversy is, is, is real, uh, uh, and I, I have heard this uh, from other sources that, uh, uh, that match what we just read here together. Very interesting, I think. And this says something about him. And uh, it's, also, it's also interesting that he has a lot of uh, self-awareness for him to actually say, I have no empathy. Because a lot of people without empathy will not necessarily be willing to admit it. Exactly. Yes, and uh, this shows uh, no hypocrisy at all. I mean, this is this is a man who uh, well, it also takes courage. I personally think that I am more hypocritical than him. I could not have said what he said. Is he, he uh, for some reason is self confident enough or? Uh, I don't know how to describe it. It takes a lot of courage in the in the political context of the United States to 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 say what he said, that you know he doesn't weep and he has uh, you know I mean his statement is is almost brutal, and yeah, uh, uh, what can we say? It's it's something to think about and to 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 discuss. I think I know that also Susan Zontag, uh, also an important intellectual in uh, in New York and in the United States, 
she said uh, uh, relating to what happened on September 11th, she said, well, we can accuse the terrorists of anything, but not that they were not courageous. And I think she was right. I mean, if indeed what happened happened, those people who committed uh, that, 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 that terrible, I would, I would say terrible um, action, uh, they were courageous. I mean, I could have never done something like this, that's for sure. Anyway. These are a few things about Tom Main that, uh, that uh, perhaps uh, are worth uh, uh, knowing. Uh, this is the man. Uh, he is smiling here, but uh, I don't know about this smile. There could be also grimace uh, somewhere uh, hidden or, or simultaneously present uh, with a smile. Uh, here he seems to be a little more uh, uh, troubled, so to speak. I, I like the way he looks, but uh, he does look like an intense man who, uh, you know, uh, might uh, <laughs> might have the ability to to tell certain things. Not too many people would uh, would have the courage to uh, to say. I do have to say though that um, I remember uh, when the war in Sarajevo took place somewhere between 1992 and 1995, he flew to Sarajevo together with Lebia Suds to give a conference there, or I don't know exactly what they did. I, I know the conference was, they were very interested in, in, in war, in the war in Bosnia-Herzegovina. And, uh, you know, he's uh, being described as confrontational, somehow uh, relates to, uh, you know, uh, being uh, having, having some kind of uh, interest in um, in the war. Not that they that they wanted war, but but they perhaps wanted to both him and Lebia Suits, Perhaps they wanted to uh, break the box of, uh, of false illusions of of, of uh, delusional, uh, comfortable uh, you know uh, mentalities that. Um, capitalism is nourishing uh, copiously while behind uh, that uh, you know tragic things happen sometimes in, in in many ways i think essentially he's a homme revolte a revolted man a rebel a rebel but what is strange this rebel uh, i'm talking about tom main um, is is uh, uh, is um, uh, quite capable of receiving large commissions. Uh, one of them you can see right here, the Emerson College, uh, uh, even from uh, you know uh, governmental institutions. He built a governmental building in uh, San Francisco. So he, even if clients didn't uh, recommend him. Uh, he was still able to to build a you know a, a good number of buildings and important buildings, big buildings, and some of them involving involving uh, serious uh, you know powerful institutions or powerful individuals like uh, Bill Gates. Okay, let's continue. Here he is with his wife, uh, and I believe it was and is a, a successful marriage. And uh, on the left, his own house, the round house that he built proving, uh, um, you know, uh, the saying that the, the shoemaker cannot make shoes for himself, wrong, because he built quite uh, interestingly for uh, himself, uh, himself and his wife and for, for, for them. Um, yeah, here is another picture with uh, Tom Main. Happy birthday, Tom Main. Uh, you, you are carrying yourself quite well, I would be, I, I would say. Uh, at 77. I don't know exactly what age uh, he is uh, at here in this picture, but uh, maybe not too far away from, from this moment. Okay, uh, he, uh, I, <laughs> here he does look like an intense man. Uh, I mean, maybe his coat and the shirt and the tie are a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit uh, artistic, so to speak, but uh, the expression on his face is, is the expression of someone who is uh, intense and uh, who does have something to say. And he's probably temperamental, which is good. In the back, you see the model of, um, of uh, Cooper Union, the new building that uh, he built. 
Cooper Union being a special architecture school in New York and uh, in the world. Here he is with, uh, with Laurie Anderson, uh, Anderson, uh, the, um, the, the famous uh, musician. And uh, you can tell this is a successful architect who has uh, friends uh, from, uh, you know, uh, the artistic field and uh, is comfortable with, uh, with, with that company. Drawings, I, I truly believe uh, Wolf Prix was right. Um, Tom Main does draw beautifully and uh, some of his drawings, regardless if they represent uh, accurately the building that or the buildings that were to be born from, from them, are very lyrical, very sensitive. In fact, uh, I don't know many architects today who can draw like he drew a few years ago, I thought of uh, proposing to him to write a book. I, I would have written gladly a text about the drawings of Tom May. This is one of them. You know, it, 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 it does show a, a, a poetical uh, uh, state of mind and uh, an ability to express graphically uh, um, um, uh, in, in a way, the, that, that immeasurableness or unmeasurableness that Louis Kahn thought was at the beginning of any thought or project of a great building. That is the most thing, difficult thing to do, to, to, to start with an idea or a feeling, uh, with a longing, I feel almost like saying, uh, towards that immeasurable or unmeasurable. Pe Peter Eisenman thought that uh, any building, any project should start with a grid. You have to start with a grid. Well, you, as we can see, Tom Main doesn't start with a grid, and nor uh, Alvaralto, and uh, even Khan uh, very rarely had some kind of suggestions of, uh, of a grid. So it's not necessarily true, but I understand in a way what what Peter Eisenman, who is a rationalist, even with a negative sign in front of the word rationalist, uh, Tom Main is not. Um, look at another drawing. Uh, this is the sketch of someone who, with a, with a lyrical um, uh, way of expressing graphically his thoughts and his feelings. And yes, I, I, I would say that, uh, again, Val, Wolf Briggs was right. Uh, Tom Main draws very, very well. But he also did artworks, graphic art artworks that are published in books and took part in exhibitions that are more elaborate and more experimental. And uh, we see his dual nature in a way. On one hand, we see you know, a certain amount of rectangularity, and then we see these splashes, the irrational erupting, uh, um, sometimes even with violence uh, on, 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 on the page. So there is this coexistence, and this can be seen even in a project like for the, uh, for the tower in Paris, the two sides, one side that is uh, rather rational, uh, and, and, and the other side being sensuous, uh, unpredictable, uh, uh, you know, instinctual, and so on. Uh, so there is an artist in Tom Main, and he's capable of, of, of handling the, the graphic works, uh, you know, at, at, at the highest level. He also had uh, a ten, uh, the, the thought, uh, I don't know what it was, an exhibition or a, a book with a name, uh, with a title, uh, Sculptural uh, Drawings. This is an interesting uh, conjunction of two words. In other words, you bring the three-dimensionality of, uh, of sculpture to the two-dimensionality of drawing and, uh, and uh, unite them. Uh, but his uh, repertoire, if, we, if I am to use, I hope I'm not going to become addicted to this word. This word belongs as an addiction to Patrick Schumacher uh, repertoire. He uses it quite often, but uh, <laughs> I smile because I can avoid this word. Uh, what I want to say is that uh, Tom Main, in fact, um, the, his mode of expression is um, finds a, a multitude of... Uh, of, uh, of ways of uh, externalizing itself.
So this architect who knows how to build and who knows how to run an office and who knows how to teach, who is articulate and, and the texts that accompany his projects published on his website are exquisite. They, they, they are precise, they are factual, but they are also somehow sensitive. Uh, and um, I like them very much. And I, I suggest to you, if you are interested in his work, to, um, uh, to open his website, Morphosis, uh, and uh, you can see any project there, a, a very, very well uh, presented, uh, you know, text, images, drawings, models, uh, even pictures from the construction process. It's a fine, uh, it's a fine website and quite uh, educational. Other sketches, this is a sketch for uh, the Cooper Union building uh, that he built in, in New York. Uh, this one is uh, for Dallas Museum of Nature and Science. Uh, a sketch, too bad that someone less sensitive than the artist placed that uh, stamp right on the, on the drawing. I find it actually hard to believe and infuriating. Uh, really, it's unacceptable to put a stamp like this on the drawing. Is Look, another one. How could this be? You know, I mean, with no respect at all for the drawing, because I'm convinced this was not done by the architect or the people in his office. Uh, it's just, I don't understand. It's like the bureaucrat, uh, or, uh, you know, uh, having no uh, affection and no sensitivity towards, uh, towards the artist at all. In this case, the architect. Um, there is an interesting article about uh, about the drawings of Tomain on the blog site of uh, Lebia Suds. It's called, um, I think, The Mind of Tom Main. The, this is, a, I don't know, the, the uh, poster, I imagine, of, of an exhibition he had uh, or will have, no, no, had last year in, in February. Uh, no, I don't know, September or whatever. Uh, the, the Museum for Architectural Drawing in Berlin, the sculptural drawings of uh, Tom Main. So he is also an accomplished uh, graphic artist. Okay, uh, someone wrote this article about him with this title, Tom Main, The Beauty, The Chains and the Self. And earlier today, when I made the presentation uh, first about domain, uh, I added one word to this title. And I said, maybe an even more appropriate uh, title would be Tom Main, the beauty, the beast, the chains and the self. I added the beast because I believe that uh, in his work, there is some kind of a meeting between what is called the beauty and what is called the beast. Like, uh, you know, uh, this was even the title of a, of a film and it's a, it's a, it's a well-known theme where you, you bring together uh, what beauty means and what the beast means. What I want to say is that I, Tom, I think Tom may know something about the darker side of life. And this is maybe one of the reasons why uh, he was controversial and why he is sometimes uh, confrontational. So it isn't just beauty and change and the self. There is also something else. And uh, maybe he's one of the few architects today who can uh, scream at a client or who can say what he said vis-a-vis -vis what happened in on September 11th. Anyway, um, and we'll see, we'll see the, the, the duality in, in some of his works, including his own house. But even these, uh, you know, these models, look at them. There is a, a slick uh, part here, those flat, slick uh, surfaces, and then there is the roughness. Uh, and so th there are both present. If we associate slickness with beauty and roughness with the beast, then there we have it. Um, on the other hand, I remember that Zaha Hadid said that she was looking for an architecture that was raw, uh, vital and uh, earthly. Uh, but I would say that she never truly arrived there. 
I, I don't think the architecture of Zaha Hadid ever arrived at, at being raw. Maybe she arrived at vitality, nor is her architecture earthy. I mean, it doesn't have the quality of the earth. But uh, I read that this was her, um, uh, you know, uh, desire to, to arrive there. Maybe if she lived longer, maybe she would have evolved towards that. Although I saw the opposite tendency in her work to kind of estrange the work further and further from nature and from the rawness of nature. Although Patrick Schumacher uh, seems to make some efforts towards what he calls tectonism. He tries to bring some 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 uh, materiality, some 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 even heaviness, uh, the tectonics of of, uh, of matter into the work. And maybe that I mean, not maybe. It, I think that is a positive uh, uh, desideratum or or uh, you know attempt. Anyway. Uh, so there are all kinds of complexities here in his work. Uh, there is the utopian uh, uh, urbanist. Uh, the, 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 there are all kinds of suggestions for uh, complexities that are probably very, very difficult to achieve in an actually built work. But I think it's important to, to contemplate the graphic works of uh, Tom Main in order to better understand him and also uh, his, uh, his buildings. Okay, now uh, this is the first building I show from uh, Beverly Hills from 1986. It's a um, less, um, uh, you know, provocative building. It's a, it's a beginning. Uh, the truth is he did have some years when he didn't seem to have uh, uh, commissions and he probably worked with his office for competitions. They did the uh, research that, you know, uh, the, the kind of activity that, uh, you know, sooner or later will prove uh, fruitful. But if you have also a little bit of luck, this also happened to, to Le Corbusier, who spent 10 years working on his Plan, plan Voisin for Paris or Frank Lloyd Wright, who almost uh, for 10 years didn't receive too many commissions from uh, angry puritanistic uh, North Americans because of the romantic life of the uh, of the architects so they tried to punish him and 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 he found refuge working on his utopian uh, uh, large project called Broadacre City so this is a, a possibility the architect has if you don't have commissions you can still uh, express your thoughts, your feelings, your uh, your longings for a certain kind of architecture through drawings, through models. And sooner or later, maybe it is true that any effort will bring some fruit somehow. It has been said that a butterfly, if it uh, moves its wings, let's say in uh, South America, the effect will be felt in North America or who knows where else. It's a, it's a good metaphor for, for the fact that maybe no effort is truly left. Now, this street, I'm a little bit confused, and I was confused also early in the morning. I have seen some models that do not quite look like his building, or maybe I'm wrong because of the pedestal. This seems to be his own house in Santa Monica, California, but the house itself would be just this, although it looks different from, from what I saw built. That's why I'm confused. Maybe this doesn't belong to, 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 to the house. Um, the Sixth Street residence seems to be his house. Uh, there are very, uh, very interesting uh, drawings and uh, you know, graphic works like this one uh, that, uh, that show the, the intricacies, the complexities, the intersections, the hidden parts it, it, it is an architecture that that is not willing to offer itself to you uh, completely. Uh, uh, so uh, it, it, there is always something else that is not shown. Uh, and uh, and uh, this is, I, I think, a quality. Look at this space. This space is, uh, is, uh, is almost like a three-dimensional artwork. One of his sculpted uh, um, or sculptured uh, drawings. Uh, and this is his house. Uh, and, and it's 
but it has many abstract elements. In fact, very few people are, very few things are, on the right there, yes, we see some shelves and books and the table and the chairs. But here in the, in the foreground, it's, 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 it's um, almost everything is abstract. And uh, I we certainly can't call it uh, warm and cozy, right? Right. Uh, it, it's 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 it, it, it's a house that is engaging as a as a you know three dimensional or maybe even more than three dimensional uh, artwork in, in within which uh, you know the, the the architect lives. Art understood as you know painting or drawing uh, two dimensionally uh, you know present uh, is present in the house too as you can see here but there is some kind of a uh, unity some kind of a uh, you know uh, uh, environment where all parts seem to although there are uh, disjunctions here as well it's not it's not truly a uh, no, it's 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 an environment that uh, uh, seems to to dwell on 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 some kind of a confrontation, uh, at least in artistic terms, in visual terms. Uh, I, I believe conflict is 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 uh, is is uh, an intrinsic part of, of, of a good part of uh, of the works of Morphosis and and the works of Tom Main. Uh, and, and and this actually attracts me. Have, here, if I look, the only easily recognizable element here is the towel hanging there, and maybe there is a lamp there, but and the vase. But otherwise, the 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 you know what we see here is uh, abstracted to the level of almost not recognizing what we look at. Uh, even here, which is a uh, uh, part of the of the of, of, of the bedroom, uh, it's almost science fiction. It's, it's something almost surreal here. I mean, look at this picture. Uh, what is this yellowish thing here? And what is? It looks like a you know kind of a copier there, but I don't think it's a copier. Uh, I don't know what it is. And this is the bedroom. And the walls are are uh, themselves. Uh, Interesting, uh, you'll see the next picture. Uh, somehow they look different here than, than, than here. But here even more is, is, uh, is a geometrized uh, or a geometrical kind of cave. Uh, and that yellowish thing there is, uh, is mysterious. I, I don't know what it is. Now, of course, we recognize the bed and the pillows and the whiteness of the sheets, but otherwise, is an abstract uh, environment. So even towards the outside, and what is interesting, we have this um, abstracted uh, volume uh, that, that is cantilevered. And uh, we can tell that this is, uh, in a way, an avant-garde house, so to speak. But look what it what, what is happening underneath it. It's like. Uh, you know, uh, what you see normally not in the context of such a house. You see some, um, you know, a lot of disorder, all kinds of objects there. Then, you know, uh, nothing is, is, is like uh, the, process, the process of life with its, um, you know, less glorious aspects is uh, copiously present there. And we'll see another picture. Now, maybe it's still during the construction, I don't know, but uh, I, I, I like this fact that the, the profane, uh, you know, if I can call it so, uh, associated simultaneously with a, with a sacred, if by the sacred would mean this, uh, you know, uh, provocative uh, cantilevered uh, block that advances towards us. It's <clears throat> Maybe I, I, I actually think Tom Main is a, is a very humane man. Uh, I, 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 I don't know him, but I have a feeling he's an honest man. And uh, uh, this shows even in the, in the, in, in the house he, lived, he lives in. Look at this fence here. Uh, it's it's uh, some kind of a neurotical uh, embroidery or neurotical art nouveau. It's, it's creative, it's an artwork in itself. And then there is this fence here, which is a very different from... So th I, think, I think he's a, 
uh, battleground of various tendencies. On one hand, you know, uh, more uh, calm in a way and rational, uh, formal approach to design. Here is something very different. Uh, there in the back, we still see, you know, some objects uh, temporarily brought out from the house. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a humane, heroic house in a way. And there is the architect. And, and even here, what do we see inside here? Lots of boxes. You know, it's, it's like, uh, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, it, you know, what we see is so very different from, let's say, the houses built by Richard Meyer, you know, uh, where everything has, a, an, uh, you know, a sacred place and everything is, I mean, and, and you'll never see something like this in a villa built by uh, uh, Richard Meyer. But uh, in the case of uh, Tom Maine, it seems that he's not afraid to, you know, uh, so to speak, to wash the, the clothes uh, or to hang them even, uh, you, know, no, you know, in the balcony. I'm talking metaphorically, of course. It, it's a house that is, is both, uh, um, you know, uh, proud and, uh, and modest. Um, somehow. And uh, the artworks uh, are also showing uh, tremendous uh, ability to, 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 to attempt to attempt to, or maybe I shouldn't use the word uh, ability. What, what impresses me is the desire to bring together uh, disparate uh, elements and, uh, and uh, create some kind of a unity out of them. The Cedar Sinai, this is uh, also an uh, early work and I couldn't find, unfortunately, uh, uh, better pictures. I only have these small uh, resolution uh, um, uh, pictures. But even here we see uh, uh, almost uh, difficult to recognize um, architectural elements. I don't know exactly what is going on there. Is it a sculpture? Is it an installation? Is it serving a specific function for this cancer center? But it, it seems interesting and engaging. And uh, just in itself is, is, a, is a provocative presence within this uh, hospital. Crowford Residence. This is a large uh, residence uh, in California from 1990. And here we can see uh, more, uh, I, I present it more in detail. I start with the drawing, the sketch, which is to me, uh, uh, again, uh, the example of a, of a, of a very sensitive uh, person in the graphic field. It's, 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 it's both uh, rigorous and musical, it's lyrical, it's abstract. I don't, I see some, I see some suggestions uh, relating to the actual building, but I, 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 I do think that Tom Main uh, uh, is an architect who, who is able to conceptualize graphically uh, at the very close proximity to that unmeasurableness, as I called it, or um, immeasurableness that uh, can refer to I, I I continue to 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 forget for sure if he used the word unmeasurable or immeasurable but both words evoke uh, the same thing even the drawing that is uh, done um, you know uh, it's not a sketch any longer is an elaborate uh, even this drawing uh, conveys that sense of, uh, of richness and multiplicity that his architecture uh, uh, is uh, a good example of. Unfortunately, on their website, uh, most drawings are uh, um, shown like this with white uh, lines on a black background. And for some reason, uh, I, I, I got a little bit tired uh, of, of, of them. I couldn't see them very well, but now uh, in this PowerPoint presentation, somehow they don't make me tired and I regret I didn't include. I have a number of them, especially for this residence, but not for other projects. 
On the other hand, if I would have included all the information shown on their website uh, for each project that I'm going to show, uh, the, I would have a right probably uh, to beyond 1,000 pictures, if not 1,500. Right now I have 550, 51. Anyway, these are some plans and, uh, you know, uh, it's a little bit difficult to, 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 to evaluate them, to study them because of the, of the scale. The, this building shows, ma shows many uh, cross sections because indeed this building is modifying its cross section uh, uh, continuously. So this is not a building that you just make one cross section and that would work for all the length of the building. No, it's not like this. That's why <laughs> here they are, one after the other, many cross sections because the building required it. And uh, this says something about the layering, the, the fragmentation, the richness, uh, sometimes linear, sometimes not, of, of his buildings, of their buildings. Uh, I'm referring to morphosis. Um, so uh, there are also very nice books uh, published by, uh, with, with their works. I have two of them. Um, uh, the, 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 even the art of making a book was, was well uh, honored by uh, Morphosis and, and, and Tom May. I mean, we are talking about architects here who are intellectuals, who are artists, who have integrity, who could be very difficult, as many brilliant people are. Uh, and this, I'm not saying it to, to totally excuse them, but uh, to explain in a way. Because when you live very intensely and you do search for beauty and truth and to, for the truth of your time and place, uh, you, you cannot be too, uh, you know, placidly, uh, uh, you know, comforting or uh, accommodating. Uh, and sometimes there is conflict between you and society. Many artists had it. You know, uh, that's why the saying, epate la bourgeoisie, in a way, this is what the artist does, is, uh, is uh, his raison d'etre to, to <laughs> you know, confront the bourgeois, although sometimes the artist himself is a bourgeois, of course, you know, but uh, essentially art is, a, is, a, is, a, is a, uh, an invention of, of, of the human being to transcend, uh, you know, the, sometimes the prosaic uh, life that we are we are we are conditioned to, to have is a way of transgressing death to begin with but more than that is uh, or not more than that because what could be more than that but in order to arrive there you have to trans transgress the limitations and art is uh, uh, an attempt to do that so this is a big, uh, big house. In fact, if you look at this model, it could have been a school or I don't know what. Uh, it's almost a palace, a modern palace, but it's, it's abstracted, it's, it has rhythm, it has vivacity within the rhythm, it has geometry, but it is not a, it is not a, a static, I mean, it is a, the rectangularity is clear for all to see, but it, it does breathe openness. It is not, it's not, uh, uh, it's not paralyzed and paralyzing. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it, it's, a, it, it's, it's an impressive building and uh, uh, the model uh, shows it. He, he sometimes uses, I saw this and you saw it too, uh, where, where the building has some curvatures uh, there is a difference actually between what we see here and, and what we see here. No, not really. Here we see the curved wall as well. Uh, but there is this, uh, this uh, you, you know, you have the building and then you have uh, a fragment of a larger uh, circle that perhaps expresses some kind of a longing for some kind of a wholeness, um, I imagine. So it's a large villa uh, in, a, in a splendid landscape and it is modern, uh, it, it has, it, it, it is not a simplistic building, it has many fragments that, uh, that uh, seem to uh, 
create uh, zones of, of mystery, of uh, uh, that to provoke your curiosity. But also, I see them as some kind of expressions of uh, of, uh, of the psych of a psychology that is uh, itself uh, aware of both sides of life, the light one and the dark one. Uh, maybe in this picture that is less seen. Um, but otherwise, the, the, the building is, uh, is, uh, does surprise one. Uh, and uh, it depends. Some, like this elevation, for example, it doesn't really have a lot of mystery. Uh, this one may be a little more. But all in all, I think there is some kind of an attempt to bring together order and disorder within the, the framework of, of geometry. Uh, he uses various materials, and uh, uh, this this fragmentation that he's uh, operating with, I think, is is uh, is a quality that Morphosis uh, has and Tom Main has. That chair, too bad I don't have other images with it, was also designed by them or by him. And it's, uh, you know, no one sits on it, but uh, somehow you almost feel as if someone does because of those two legs. And uh, even that the back back uh, of, the, of the chair is, uh, has surreally somehow uh, suggesting uh, uh, something of a, of a human body, although that human body is not there on the chair. It's, a, it's an interesting design, and I have seen that chair uh, published, but I, I, I forgot to incorporate it in, in, in the presentation. Um, I, I, I said this before, and I'm saying it again. Uh, somehow this, uh, this uh, curved ceiling, uh, to me, is a little bit... Uh, not surprising enough, a little bit, uh, a little bit, a little bit uh, convenient, but uh, and he uses it sometimes, rarely in other buildings. We are going to see them. Here we have the mystery of that piece in the center, there symmetrically uh, positioned. Uh, I mean, right in the center. What is it exactly in terms of function? I do not know. But it does look good, and it is uh, mysterious, and it is monumental, and it is sculptural. So architecture also needs such elements, which are, uh, well, it's true. There is the risk of making something, uh, you know, uh, without, I mean, capriciously, although capriciousness is also part of, of life and part of uh, artistic creativity. But there is a risk sometimes. Well, there is a risk if you if you try to justify and legitimate legitimize everything in terms of reason and function, then you forget that beauty itself has a function and is needed. Okay, the healthcare office building. This is a building that perhaps is one of, is not one of the most uh, uh, glorious. It's still kind of a early building by them. Certain elements are seen here, but it's a building that is uh, not as, uh, as it seems not to be as creative as, as some of the later buildings. Um, now we, we arrive at another residence, the Blades residence in Santa Barbara from 1995. He's quite capable of, of, of negotiating between, uh, you know, a grayish uh, uh, concrete uh, building with some steel elements. And, uh, and the landscape that is, uh, you know, accepting the, the, the beauty of nature uh, without uh, constraints. And so there is a dialogue between the building and, 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 and nature that is uh, um, in good measure, in equal uh, in, in conditions of, uh, of uh, democratic, so to speak, <clears throat> equality. Uh, I don't think Tom Main would ever use the word <clears throat> like uh, Winnie Mass used, uh, outsmarting nature. I, I, 
I, I would like to think that you have never used them. And I don't think he does. This is the building. It, it's a large building. Uh, and, uh, and still, because of the fragmentations, it's not an arrogant uh, monolith. And uh, I even said something maybe a little bit uh, disputable or, or even controversial. I don't know if in, related with, in relation with this picture or the next one. Yeah, with this one. I said, this is what I said earlier today when I presented his work that, that and I'm quoting from myself, uh, I don't know if I do the right thing, but I do it uh, again, <laughs> nevertheless. Even this building is obviously not for a proletarian. I mean, it is an opulent, large building built by a famous architect or on his way towards uh, fame. Uh, um, I think even a proletarian would have felt at home here. What I'm trying to say is this is not a crushing building. This is not a building that uh, uh, says to you, whoever you are, you are too small for me. No, that's, this is what I like. It's a, it is a heroic architecture, but it is a heroic architecture that is not arrogant. And its heroism, I think, could be understood by, by so-called uh, you know, the man on the street. That's what I'm trying. And I'm thinking of, of, uh, of, uh, of the metaphor that Nietzsche used and then Heidegger uh, referred to, uh, that, 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 to, to unite the, the eagle with a snake, uh, you know, the proudest animal or bird, the eagle. And, and, and then, because you also need uh, discernment, uh, you need a snake, you need uh, both pride and modesty, uh, even humility. And I don't know, when I look at this building, I don't see, I don't see pride, that pride that, that makes you, that crushes you, no. That's what I meant, or I tried to mean by saying, even a proletarian would feel home in this house and the house would welcome uh, him um, accordingly. We see again the, the, the so-called capricious uh, curves of those walls that try to bring some roundness, uh, even though not necessarily a circle uh, uh, in, 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 the, in the substance of, of the, the architectonic uh, body. This is an interesting uh, building in Seoul uh, from 1997, the Sun Tower. Uh, and he worked for two clients who, uh, and, and the dualities that are present uh, within himself, meaning Tom Main, uh, found some kind of a reflection in the fact that it seems the, the clients also had some kind of a dispute. So there was a duality here. Uh, I read, we were first able to experiment dramatically with a second skin where we could separate the formal demands of the surface from the pragmatic requirements of the body with a sun tower in Seoul. The rigid constraints of a very constricted site, a generic program and the requirement to maximize the zoning envelope posed a challenge to create a form liberated from the direct impact of these conditions. The fact that two property owners were in dispute, you see the two property owners provided the departure point a duality expressed by severing the building vertically. And, and, and many of the buildings uh, of, 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 uh, of uh, morphosis do have such gestures of severance, of severing uh, vertically or otherwise. Separating the towers generated a wedge-shaped volume that would serve as an entry point, provide for greater interaction with the street and allow for more fluid visual proportions. In addition, inserting a compressed ad hoc public space in the single mass signal the resolution of the scheme, whereby, whereby a translucent membrane of uh, perforated aluminum enfolded the volume of the building. Inspired by the forms of materials district, distinct to Korean origami, and by the garment design of our client, this exterior so-called fabric produces optical effects that constantly shift with a play of sun across it. At the peak of, a day, of the day, it is a reflective place. At night, illuminated from the interior, it acts as an oversized urban billboard and shadow play. At once, brisole, enclosure, and lyrical abstraction, the surface perpetually transforms 
oscillating between translucency and opacity until the building itself appears dematerialized. Additionally, this exterior membrane reinterprets city setback constraints, wrapping and folding its way up the height of the tower and ultimately enclosing a penthouse with a set of three-story trusses that contains mechanical space and alludes to the top articulation of the traditional tower typology. Uh, so this is the tower. It is a remarkably different tower because of its uh, sculptural qualities. And somehow it still relates to the physical context of, this, of the street, which has these uh, individual houses, um, each one colorful and a little bit from the other one. And so the fragmentations that characterize the works of uh, Tom Main and Memf uh, Morphosis uh, they find uh, uh, an appropriate pl place here to manifest themselves. He was never considered. I must say that was a, a very well written narrative about the building. Well, uh, as I said, uh, Mahadev, it's true. Uh, he uh, the, the, the accompanies the presentation of all the projects on the website. Uh, uh, with a very, uh, you know, uh, informative, but also sensitive uh, descriptions. And, uh, you know, uh, I come back to what Wolf Prick said that uh, uh, his friend, I mean, Tom Main's friend, uh, Eric Owen Moss is a master with words. I think Tom Main is as well, because I imagine he wrote these, or I don't know, he approved, I believe he wrote them. Yes, you are right, Mahadev. I was also impressed by the, by the. It's a text that is uh, precise, but not rigidly precise. Uh, it's it's a fine text, yes. And each project has such descriptions. I will have uh, another one or two more cases where I, I have a text. Then I I, I decided to uh, abstain from reproducing them because it would take me hours and hours to present all the works I, I intend to present. But the, the, the building also is, is interesting. And uh, yeah, the, the, the functionalist might have some questions about the, the precise function that those uh, roofs uh, serve, uh, forgetting that architecture is also expression. Now, it's true that these, these uh, expressions need money uh, to be built and the open-mindedness from, uh, from the clients. I like these uh, graphic uh, representations where you have a hybrid uh, uh, you know, uh, presence of uh, a drawing diagram and then a human figure uh, here also. So it's, it's, it's an attempt to bring to abstraction also a certain level of uh, figuration, even if that figuration, it could be itself uh, almost abstract and, and mysterious. Uh, it's clear here that uh, the Tom Main and, and their, his office uh, uh, are, are, are very aware of, of the importance of, of the graphic material they publish. And, and, and they probably, that's how they study. Is, uh, is, uh, they, are, they are architects, artists, intellectuals, they, they uh, for them, architecture is, uh, is, uh, is, is closer to, as Alvar Aalto would say, it belongs to culture, not to civilization. Although in the case of their work, probably it belongs to civilization as well. We see the, the cut, the rift, the, the yes, uh, the incision, uh, and uh, you can see it even in, in these diagrams a little less, easy to perceive it here. I am just showing this. Uh, the, there are plenty of images and drawings and you know, it's a complex building and, and, and uh, uh, as such, uh, the, the drawings could be illuminating. But for some reason, in this case, I, I, I incorporated some. In other cases, I, I, I didn't because uh, the, 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 the length of the presentation would have, would have increased uh, uh, dramatically. But the, as the name of, of, of his office uh, suggests already, uh, 
this is an architecture practice very interested in the dynamics of life and art and architecture transformation metamorphosis morphosis is is, is about uh, uh, making something that is not uh, you know frozen uh, although it has been said that architecture is frozen music uh, I'm talking here about uh, an architecture that somehow wants to, to, wants to move, wants to be alive, wants to be, uh, yes, uh, dislocated uh, in its rigidities by, by a spirit, by a, uh, an energy. And uh, this is not easy. You see, there are these folds, fold uh, number two, uh, uh, fold number three, uh, fold number four, what are these faults for? They problematize architecture in the name of life, to make it alive. And uh, you might not need in his buildings to throw yourself through the window as a, a manifesto or a, a part, a, an image from a manifesto by uh, Bernard Chumwe suggested. Uh, that uh, we might need to commit a crime in order to, 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 to bring liveliness to, to architecture. I think uh, we could uh, obtain that without uh, committing a crime, unless we talk about these faults or the crime, so-called crime with quotation marks um, uh, of uh, bringing these junctions in. I would say that his work in general could perhaps receive another title like architecture and disjunctions, because the, 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 there is a, a series of, of disjunctions present in every building they built. The Diamond Ranch High School uh, from 1999. Uh, I like, uh, uh, before uh, the, 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 this is again a text from their website, uh, there is a, just a line, a short line that in a way is the essence of what they want to say engages architecture in the art in the act of education so the description the diamond range high school engages architecture in the act of education it is it speaks to students exper experientially through a physically kinetic architectural language that makes no references to traditional typology but rather looks elsewhere to encourage student inquiry and provoke curiosity the opportunity existed by virtue of the sl steeply sloped site to explore the hybrid territory of an augmented landscape wherein building and site would be percept perceptually interchangeable. The jacked and inherently unstable forms of the Los Angeles foothills inform the language of the buildings as the scheme takes its organizational cues from the natural uh, topography. Two rows of fragmented interlocking forms are set tightly on either side of a long central canyon or street, which cuts through the face of the hillside as might a geologic fault line. The street provides the primary opportunity for students to interact haphazardly or by plan with one another with teachers and with administrators as they move about the campus, seeking to create a counterpoint to Diamond Ranch suburban context, the sense of an urban experience is intensified via the compression of the street, a monumental stairway which functions doubly as an outdoor amphitheater is embedded in the hillside leading from the school's main academic areas to the roof terrace and football field above. The site plan defines three distinct schools within a school, clusters of semi-independent units that each integrate a full curriculum segregated by grade level to foster team teaching in a more intimate educational setting. Landscaped outdoor teaching areas act as a courtyard buffers, as courtyard buffers between buildings and punctuate the classroom units with views of mountains and sky. Uh, this is important. I, I think Tom Main and his office are very uh, attentive to, in a large sense speaking, to the mountains and the sky, that is to nature. The intention of the whole 
is to challenge the message sent by a society that routinely communicates its disregard for the young by educating them in cheap institutional boxes surrounded by impenetrable chain link fences. Now, if this is confrontational, I take my hat off in front of this uh, confrontation because I think architects should be confrontational in the way uh, Tom Main is. The architects should fight for a bettering life and to, uh, should, should protest against that uh, society that routinely communicates its disregard for the young. Uh, uh, so uh, here is the, the auctionable idealism, to use uh, Ginny Gang's words, of, uh, of Tom Main's uh, um, thoughts and feeling, feelings and practice. Another drawing uh, of, of high uh, lyrical uh, uh, suggestive power. And um, now we look at some pictures of the, of, 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 of the school. If we can call it a school, it is a school, but it is a school indeed, there are three schools within a school. And so I think growing up and being educated in such an environment is, is conducive to uh, become yourself ap appreciative uh, towards the multiplicity of life, to, towards, uh, you know, our, other religions, other cultures, variety, variety in unity. Yes, there is unity, but there is also variety. And uh, this street is, is conducive, I think, to, to that toget togetherness that we all need, but a togetherness which doesn't annihilate uh, our specific uh, uh, individualities. Well, the buildings themselves, uh, uh, you know, are grayish and, uh, you know, modern looking, so to speak, uh, they, they are sculptural. If I am to have express a certain reticence and a certain regret is the fact that often their buildings uh, towards the outside mainly uh, they, they, they kind of use the same materials, you know. Uh, I, 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 I miss sometimes even organic uh, materials like brick, for example, the humble brick. Usually the architecture is, uh, for my taste, a little bit cold in terms of materiality, in terms of volume and sculpturalness, no. But in terms of the, of the, of the, of the matter that is used to build the buildings, they are, for my taste, for my taste, I am subjective and I apologize for my subjectivity, although it's my authenticity expressed through my subjectivity, they are a little bit too grayish and a little bit too cold. Um, but look at the, the North American paradigmatic uh, school bus, you know, it's from a different age, from a different time. I mean, what does that bus have to do with the building? You know, it's, I mean, I like them in a way, you know, because I'm a nostalgic man, but, uh, you know, the building is, belongs to, to almost to the future and the bus belongs to the past. Well, I guess why not have them together, like in the drawings and photo, some photographs of Le Corbusier. Although in the case of Frank Lloyd Wright, it was different. In the case of, well, not quite different, but, uh, there are, especially in that project that I mentioned, Broadacre City, there are on the sky even uh, drones in the 50s, you know, 70, 80 years ago, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright drew drones on, on the sky and uh, strange helicopters and uh, machineries, flying machines, and his cars have three wheels and they are few, very futuristic. Not so in the drawings uh, of uh, Le Corbusier, where the cars are just like this bus. Anyway, um, interesting school. And I do believe, I do believe that a child who is uh, educated in a building that is engaging and uh, open and uh, transformative transforms the child too. Doesn't matter, well, it does matter the, the, the the way the child is, is raised in, at home, but, but the child spends many hours in the school. So the school is important uh, in, in its architecture as well. I mean, look at that, uh, look at this corner here. 
you know it's almost an invitation to to uh, you know for the student to become himself or herself uh, well that could create some problems because if you are in society like this building is here you could uh, encounter some resistance but in, in essence i think this architecture is an invitation to be to be yourself uh, to put it simply, um, maybe too simply, uh, uh, the flowers are as magnificent as uh, they always are. I mean, uh, we need more nature. The more, the better. Uh, and maybe wild nature is even better. The wilder, the better. That's what I think. Uh, it is an interesting uh, architecture, even at the time of rain. Uh, it seems it rained when this photograph was taken. And um, again, I regret a little bit the, 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 a little bit the predictability of the materials used, uh, and, and then they are repeated in almost all their buildings, with the exception of some of the, the earlier houses. But on the other hand, it's like a new brutalism, isn't it, in some ways? Yes, well, uh, yeah, uh, there is, uh, and uh, here on the other hand is, uh, I, I mean, it's the dignity of architecture, uh, you know, even here near the, uh, you know, the tracking uh, uh, platform or how you call it, uh, it's, it's architecture, you, you can tell there was an architect here who had something to say and uh, it's, it's, it's done, uh, it's done convincingly. Diagonals are um, very often present, but it's not just diagonals. The truly, uh, domain and and uh, and uh, and uh, morphosis, just as uh, the sketches of domain suggest, have uh, many uh, fragments, if I can call them so, that that uh, that uh, create a, a complex uh, architectural uh, um, organism. The University of Toronto. This is an interesting building from the year 2000. Uh, look at this. You know, as opposed to the tower in Seoul, uh, this one is a is a horizontal <coughs> building. It's a horizontal building, but it's 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 uh, it is striking, although not in an overwhelming way. Uh, the street is as it is, and the building asserts its modernity with courage. Uh, almost uh, an avant-garde courage, if I can call it so. Uh, and he plays, he, he does this sometimes, or they do this sometimes, uh, with uh, they incorporate the name of the institution uh, uh, in a monumental way, and sometimes in a whimsical way, like that big O there, which is a letter. And... Uh, I don't know exactly. I mean, it's the last letter of the word uh, Toronto. And uh, it's interesting. Why not identify the building uh, in a more creative way than often it is done, where we just hang a signage, uh, you know, above the entrance door or something like this. Here, the, 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 the name of the building is, is uh, dramatically monumentalized and becomes part of the artwork and the architectural work. Uh, and I think it's a good idea and they do it uh, in other works as well. We'll see. It's a fine building. It's a fine building and uh, what can we say? It, it, it shows again the interest of Tom Main and Morphosis in education. Uh, this is also a building that is dedicated to it, and, uh, uh, and so not only that he teaches uh, and uh, he taught for many years, but also his buildings address education uh, constantly, and I think uh, he would agree with Erasmus of Rotterdam, who said that education is the most important uh, activity for a nation. I wish, uh, you know, uh, the ministers of culture, uh, of education in many countries would understand this. Uh, I'm not sure they do. 
uh, or the yeah the ministries of education uh, often are uh, dwarfed by the bureaucracy and the, the, they are not feeling what education is and should be is very very important if a country arrives at a high educational level that country would do well i'm sure china proves it now they have a they have a good educational system finland has it the united states has great universities you need a good education without a good good education you collapse and good schools, architecturally speaking, uh, contribute to a good education uh, silently. Uh, this is known also by Stephen Hall, who did some some uh, remarkable uh, uh, buildings dedicated to to schooling, to either university level or uh, other levels. This is also an interesting building from Austria, from 2002. Uh, the building. Uh, from from the top integrating rural and urban typologies again we see an attempt to unite the opposites through some kind of hybridity integrating rural and urban this is not easy but they attempted to do it the building integrates inherent complexities uh, the shifting border between rural and urban typologies its form emanates from both the pre-alpine contoured landscape and the narrow twisting passages and plazas of a small village. The center is located just east of Klagenfurt, Austria, where the city extends into its outlying suburban and agricultural regions. As with many contemporary edge city conditions, the, the site is surrounded by dislocated buildings, open parking areas, large scale commercial developments and residential suburbs. The sloping, sharply folded roof creates a conceptual landscape, while the low-rise building component emerges from the ground as reconfigured earth. Like the seismic shifting of tectonic plates, the five-story bank headquarters juts out of the earthbound lower form. The center separate volumes intersect around the central courtyard which allows light to permit the branch bank on the ground floor. Bridges at each floor link the elevator core and lobbies along the edge of the courtyard with a larger building mass and continue out to puncture the facade and create balconies overlooking the city streets. Overlooking the city streets and before we read about overlooking the mountains and the sky is the same uh, attitude, the same attempt to go beyond the limits of your uh, immediate surroundings and in, in a way to connect with what we call uh, the environment. Pedestrian pathways are an extension of the existing peripheral streets. The intersecting Cardo and the Cumanus axis carve into the building conglomeration. At the southern end of the Decumanus, a large canopy connects the public forum space directly to the busy Volke, Volke Mark Strasse intersection, inviting the public into the event center and bank branch. At the northern section of the site, open gardens, commercial and office space, and the kindergarten transition into the neighboring low density suburban residential zone. Both program typology and form topography redefine the role of hypobank to become a major cultural and uh, civic institution. This is the building. Um, you will see some interesting pictures here. Again, the building is, uh, you know, glass, steel, and concrete, uh, but with uh, some um, uh, invitations towards chromatic uh, accidents. And you'll see what I'm referring to. Uh, interestingly, uh, Tom Main was not considered and is not considered a deconstructivist architect, and maybe it is correct not to but on the other hand i don't think he's less of a so-called deconstructivist than for example rem kolhas on the other hand i i i i think that he himself would contest uh, that uh, you know title or 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 description
but there are elements in his architecture because of these fragmentations that would somehow to an extent connect what he does what they do with uh, with deconstruction although i think his effort is not to deconstruct but to construct but to con construct uh, uh, taking into consideration of multitude of fragments of uh, individualities of entities that uh, submit to the quest for unity but refuse to accept to be uh, uh, devoid of, uh, of their particularities and their individuality. That's why their architecture is uh, um, like a conglomerate where you could, you could see the components. Um, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, I mean, uh, the, the, this kind of architecture is inspiring because it is, uh, 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 in a way, uh, manifesting uh, this uh, this uh, belief that uh, we we should have multiplicity in unity and not just unity and not just multiplicity we should have both i have a very nice book called the sufi tradition in persian architecture and those uh, uh, you know old masters who are anonymous actually they search for the same thing multiplicity in unity this is not easy to achieve, but it should be uh, a goal, uh, a noble one uh, to long for, I think, in architecture. And perhaps not just in architecture. And look at that, uh, you know, uh, rebellious uh, architectural entity that, uh, that breaks the facade. Uh, 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 here we have the non-conformist, the rebel, the l'homme revolté, but the one who wants freedom, who wants to break the box, who wants to exit towards the sky and the clouds and the mountains. And uh, I, I like this very much. Of course, the, the functionalist, the rigid functionalist would protest, would say, wait a minute, we cannot spend money for this, these gestures of uh, liberating uh, desires. But look here, we have uh, an actor, an actress, uh, you know, dressed in red, uh, asserting the freedom of, 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 that we all long for, uh, suspended from that uh, strange uh, uh, architectural entity that emerges from, uh, from the facade of the building. And here we have another example with an exalted, uh, an exalting um, dancer or actor uh, well, uh, he seems to be connected to a saving uh, cable because, you know, exaltation, if it's not balanced by care, could uh, result in disaster. Any, especially with so much glass around. Anyway, it, it, it's a good building and uh, there we see these interstitial spaces that the morphosis is, uh, uh, is known for and Tom Main as well, of course. Um, if you are so kind, please turn off the microphone. Uh, thank you. Uh, and so even the play, the, 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 the dialectics between light and shadow are, are, uh, have uh, plastic qualities, artistic qualities. And uh, there are all kinds, in fact, it's very difficult to prepare a material for presentation with the works because there are so many images that are seductive and it's very hard to decide uh, which ones to, to keep and which ones to, to abandon. It's almost impossible to abandon. Now, this is a building from, uh, from Los Angeles. I start with a, with a, with a rather pale, um, um, know uh, reproductions of the of the working drawings or the presentation drawings uh, not too often I found uh, plans and sections on a white background now I'm beginning to miss those on a black background here we see the the, the number 100 giantly uh, I mean I don't think there is an adverb uh, called uh, giantly but uh, you know giant uh, numbers incorporated part of the body of the of the building and uh, we see some pipes here that become playfully uh, sculptural and uh, um, 
all in all, it, 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 is, a, it, is, a, it is a building that uh, a, a even at night has some musical uh, you know, aspirations, if, if, I can, if I can say so. And uh, it, it is, it is uh, um, th there is richness, despite the fact that, yes, the, the building is, uh, is using, uh, I would say, a rather limited uh, uh, number of materials, kind of the same, metallic. Uh, it's, 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 it's a decision, an aesthetical decision. I miss personally a little bit uh, the tactility of, of, of some other materials, but it would have been perhaps uh, difficult to marry that with, with this. Nevertheless, it's, it's an interesting building, both during the day and during the night. It's creative uh, at, at all levels, and, uh, and uh, the graphics are incorporated into the architecture. Uh, and um, the lighting um, as well uh, is, is uh, creatively uh, uh, studied and, and, uh, and uh, used. I would, I would say that uh, Morphosis uh, in their best works are able to to uh, marry those uh, two terms that uh, I, I mentioned this before, that, that Boileau referred to l'esprit de géométrie and l'esprit de finesse. And it's not easy to bring them together, but they achieve that, or this. You know, just this detail, this fragment, you know, this, this corner here is, is, is rich. It's, uh, you kind of understand how it was built how it was done, but it's it's eventful. It's it's uh, it, it has density of, uh, of meaning and density of uh, uh, visual. Uh, uh, I mean, it, it is a visual uh, condensation there. Of, of it's it's not a sub superficial architecture. You can tell they 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 worked a lot in order to arrive here. It's a dense building. And is not the only one. I mean, most of the buildings are, are like this, dense. Science Center School uh, in Los Angeles, 2004, uh, dissolved the boundaries between the building systems on, on the ground. Again, the same system at bringing together, uh, because dissolving the boundaries, this is what, what me, it means. I'm not so sure about the, the rather frequent use of the word systems, not so much in the text that probably belongs to Tom Main, but I, I read an interview with two of his collaborators and especially one of them used the word system or systems very, very often. The hybrid campus of primary education and scholastic research serves as a gateway to the greater University of Southern California. Uh, ex exposition park area and establishes a community foothold in the heart of South Los Angeles. Program is slipped between layers of lifted landscape to dissolve the boundaries between the building systems and the ground and to prioritize views of the historically significant armory building and the existing landscape of the Rose Garden. The armory's main hall converted into a flexible open two-story atrium and dominated by a large interior bamboo, bamboo garden is the heart of the science education resource center. Libraries, labs, meeting rooms and classrooms flank the atrium's perimeter and are provided access to the new North School building via a pair of bridges. The interior bamboo garden pierced midway up by the skywalks and punctuated with meeting spaces is meant to bring a piece of nature into this somewhat blighted inner city environment. It is possible once the bamboo is fully grown, please be kind and turn off the microphone. There is a background noise. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, sorry now, anyway. I'm afraid I have to mute that microphone myself. Uh, I have to, in the morning, I mean, at 3 p.m., I had to do it often, 
Okay, uh, I don't even know now if it's still recording. Anyway, um, I was hoping that uh, I, I won't be forced to do this. So the classrooms are grouped in clusters. Maybe I should stop reading because uh, reading and it's already late. Um, yeah, let, let, let's look at uh, let's look at the building. Although something is happening here. Uh, okay, this is the building, the school, and I, I really admire it for its uh, being straightforward and yet uh, not uh, boringly so. It, it's a unity that has uh, variety. You see it better here. This is the building, and uh, this resolute modernity uh, is is uh, is also sensitive. Is is not. It I think is very well designed, and uh, and uh, I think here again, uh, morphosis is quite able to to negotiate between um, um, what is supposed to be public and what is supposed to be you know private or individual. Um, we see the diagonal that uh, uh, I, I think it expresses the aspiration, the longing for, uh, for freedom and for uh, another dimension. Uh, this diagonal uh, is, uh, I think, necessary in everybody's life and certainly necessary in architecture and in uh, art alike. In fact, perhaps that's what art is, a diagonal as an expression of, uh, of uh, otherness. Uh, my feeling is that these are not uh, privileged children, but uh, the, the opposite, and uh, I admire it even more for so. You know, to bring uh, uh, a very skillful architect to work for uh, underprivileged uh, uh, children is uh, is a great thing, uh, I think, and uh, I believe Tom Ennis uh, has an empathy for uh, for such uh, uh, for such programs. This lady with the red uh, something uh, clothing on her appears on some of some of the uh, uh, pictures even here. So I imagine either she was uh, hired or uh, you know brought in for the pictures. That I took these pictures from their website. Look at the beauty of nature. The more we have it, the better. We need nature, nature, and again nature, because nature is giving us, without charging us at all, uh, oxygen. I mean, what more do we need? Uh, we need oxygen badly, and uh, not to speak about the, the inspirational uh, beauty of nature that is uh, warming up our hearts. And uh, we need, we need, we need badly. We shouldn't cut any blade of grass, any tree, any bush. We shouldn't cut them. We should allow them to grow all over the world. Uh, and uh, I saw yesterday a project for uh, Champs Elysees in Paris to make it green. There is a strong tendency now to even I saw a project for Manhattan to make the whole Broadway a linear park. We need we need nature. We need to bring it back. And we also need these children here who have the, the great great opportunity to study in a building by Tom Main and Morphosis and uh, um, silently absorb some of the ideals that animated these architects. University of Cincinnati, this building I, I have seen, I was there. Uh, I didn't study it, but I was there and I know what it means. I like the word weaving very, very much because the very word architecture in its second part, texture, derives from tex, T-E-K-S, which in the, the Proto-Indo-European language means to weave. So weaving as a means of establishing flow to resolve the site's disparate staccato of existing buildings and edges informs the principal strategy for the University of Cincinnati master plan. We were interested in developing a series of connective events to engage peripheral flows on the campus in order to generate or augment an urban density and to encourage rather than dampen the polyvalent nature of social experience on campus. Uh, again, a very, very, very nice and sensitive drawing. I, I love his drawings. Uh, I mean, you know, if this architect is confrontational, his drawings are not. 
these drawings are actually uh, gestures of, of uh, collaboration and bridging, if not embrace. I, I, I think these, these, these drawings are not the drawings of someone who uh, indulges in, uh, in uh, confrontations. He's someone who searches for peace, but yeah, sometimes we arrive at peace through... In fact, if you serve peace, without betraying what you truly feel uh, it's worth doing it but if you serve it by uh, by uh, dampening to use uh, his word uh, your your honest uh, uh, feelings and thoughts then uh, is a problem because it's a false peace is an unknown unearned peace even this this um, this drawing here is 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 i think is is relevant and this one as well. I don't see very well the connection with the building, but whatever it is, I think it's it's it's, it's a very nice drawing. Uh, and uh, okay, now these are the buildings, uh, and uh, these are also dedicated to students. The the building here is by Bernard Chumi, and I will talk about Bernard Chumi on the twenty fifth of January when it will be his birthday. This one is by, uh, by uh, Morphosis and Tom Main. Uh, Michael Graves also built a building here, but I don't see it. And I'm, <laughs> to be honest with you, rather happy I don't see it because I didn't like it. It's here. Uh, anyway, um, that's because postmodernism uh, turns me off. But look again at the, at the modest majesty of the grass, of the trees. Of, 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 of what nature gives us uh, in, 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 in magnificent uh, generosity. Um, okay, and the, the architects were and are generous as well. We see the expressionism of this corner, the triangle, the curvature is, is uh, inviting us to, to, to uh, uplift ourselves. And art and good architecture uh, do that. Um, Maybe not everywhere, but uh, in, 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 in many parts, yes. You see here, you, we see simultaneous uh, activities uh, of various kinds, uh, and, and this creates a, a sense of belonging, which is, I think, important and is good for running. <laughs> you know, I think you run better when you know that, that, that you are part of a, of a, of a, of a community uh, and you are not just, uh, uh, you know, a uh, lonely uh, runner. Good architecture, I think, uh, brings people together. And, uh, and uh, uh, this is important, I think, a balance between, uh, as I mentioned in a, in a different presentation, between le fais et moi and le fais et nous, uh, between, uh, yeah, the individual and the society. Uh, there must be a balance, and it's not easy to achieve this balance. In communism, there was uh, 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 the collective, uh, but there was the individual disappeared in, uh, I would say uh, in some countries, and I could mention them, but I, I abstain, uh, although maybe I could uh, mention it. Uh, I used to say that in the United States, this was my experience, one plus one equaled one plus one, while the communist countries, country that I left, two equal two, but I think an ideal society is one where one plus two equals two. Meaning you have the collective, two, but you also have the individual, one. Uh, if you have just the collective, it's not good. If you have just the individual, excessive individualism, that is not good either. There must be unity in variety, variety in unity, I think. And architecture can help in that sense, uh, silently. This is a very interesting project in Madrid. It's a public housing, uh, quite unique. I, I, I never saw one like this before. I don't know if I should read now. I am a little bit tired and you are probably too. Um, let's uh, move forward. We see a, 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 a sum of uh, courtyards, of corridors, of balconies. Uh, there is 
as I said before, uh, multiplicity in unity. Look at this. I don't care too much about this building, which also belongs, I think, to the complex built by Morphosis. But I like very much what I see here. So very different from all the other blocks of flats around. This is really a communal kind of build, uh, building, yes, and housing. But there is also the fragmentation derived from the individual, uh, individuality of various units. So there is, as I said, a variety in unity. And it's quite innovative and creative compared to you know, what is around. So uh, uh, it is a creation. I regret a little bit that this thing is here, uh, but who knows? It's my perception, my subjectivity. Otherwise, it's a very interesting, uh, uh, it's kind of a, like a flat, uh, flat uh, block of flats, uh, uh, but composed of uh, individual units. Uh, a very interesting uh, uh, kind of uh, architectural urbanism, uh, kind of, a, you know, it's halfway between urbanism and architecture. Well, urbanism is architecture. And like Palladio said, a room should be like the house, the house like a street, the street like the city, and vice versa. The city is a big house, and uh, the house is a small uh, city. Uh, here we have we have something similar to that wisdom of Palladio, uh, and um, I, I like this. I, I mean, I never went there, but I would love to to experience what is going on there. Maybe some people would say there isn't enough privacy. I don't know. I don't know, but it, it is a very interesting housing complex. Uh, and uh, you know, the, a warmer climate would uh, would uh, would uh, sympathize with it. I think. And now we arrive at the courthouse, a courthouse uh, here that maybe I should read a little bit of a text where he is again a little bit confrontational, repositioning proceedings of business, uh, business as usual. So obviously Tomain is against the proceedings of business as usual. So he wants to reposition them. So today the architecture of justice drifts away from symbolic iconography Courtrooms are routinely located in generic office towers, indifferent to the gravity of the judicial process. A very sensitive statement and a critical statement, because yes, many, uh, you know, uh, justice, so-called justice buildings are uh, uh, ignoring the gravity uh, of, of the judicial process, which should be reflected in the architecture as well. So the Wayne Lehman Morse United States Courthouse challenges this trend, expressing courtrooms as discrete objects steadfast against a dynamic field of forces, recalling the historic single room courthouse in which the court's raison d'etre was made palpable by the architecture. Uh, we move forward. Uh, again, I, I regret a little bit uh, the, 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 the materials used, uh, uh, but uh, there are exceptional things here going on, and I, I, I will point them out. Uh, it, it's, um, it, it's a courthouse, a uh, palace of justice, so to speak, that attempts to influence the decision makers uh, to, to, to be more sensitive and not to perhaps even entertain Hamletian doubts or doubting. Because yes, there are very serious matters decided here. One's life could be ruined in, in such palaces of so-called justice. Uh, so um, it is a very important matter. After all, who are we to judge? You know, and uh, uh, I remember in the Brothers Karamazov by Dostoevsky, the dilemma of the Grand Inquisitor. What do you do when the divinity is not uh, assisting you in taking decisions that are important? Then you have to take on your shoulders a trembling or maybe not so trembling human being the importance of such uh, uh, gestures. Uh, you know, there are people who are sent to death in such buildings. Uh, the, 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 these, 
these decisions are very, very difficult to make. And uh, maybe such a decision should never be made to send someone uh, to death. Uh, look at this artwork in front of the base of the building. This really interested me. And I said it earlier and I say it now again, I, I, I wish I didn't uh, neglect to enlarge just this artwork, this image, because it's very interesting what's going on here. I think this is an installation that seems to suggest to the lawyers and those people involved working in this building to, uh, to be very, very, very careful and not to forget the labyrinth of data and uh, the contortions of the human spirit and uh, the, 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 the fragility of us all. It's very interesting what's going on here. I hope I'm not, uh, you know, uh, it's not some kind of a phantasmagoria that I'm indulging in. I think it is some kind of an artwork. What else could it be? Because the building seems to be built. Uh, but if it is what I imagine it is, it shows great sophistication and, and, and sensitivity. Uh, anyway, the building uh, has, uh, has uh, uh, I think in the, in the interior, sometimes certain things are a little bit uh, similar to some other buildings. But uh, the attempt is a correct one to, to create, create variety, an engaging uh, environment, uh, maybe a little bit too much whiteness and too, my, too much great, uh, grayness. Uh, for me, fortunately, here we have also wood. And it's good that this wood manifests itself exactly where the decisions are taken. Uh, uh, and the testimonies are taken and so on. And I love this picture, you, you know, just a small opening into a large wall through which you perceive in the distance uh, something else, a different reality. And maybe we should have such small openings in our minds as well. So we can see, we can feel what we usually don't. Uh, it's an interesting, and this is actually the last image connected with this project on the website of Morphosis. Now we arrive at an interesting federal building in San Francisco, built in 2006. Why do I say it's interesting? Not just because of how it looks like, and I think it does have an interesting look, but it's interesting the vertical circulation where, where the, 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 the lift, the elevator, stopped at every uh, third floor, as you can read skip stop circulation diagram elevator stop at every third floor opening onto sky lobbies with grand stairs leading to the floors above and below so this is very interesting because it's a, a hybrid vertical circulation combining both uh, you know uh, the, the elevator and uh, walking up or down the stairs and you will see also a section, a cross section through the building. You see it here. It's a very, very interesting idea, I think. And I'm very surprised and very happy that the government, the federal uh, you know, uh, authority of San Francisco built such a building because I think it's very innovative, uh, unconventional, almost uh, you know, uh, controversial, uh, but uh, I'm very happy it happened. Um, and uh, Tom Main and Morphosis were the right people for it. Um, now we arrive at another interesting building, uh, the Cahill Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics at the Institute of uh, Technology in Pasadena. Again, the, 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 the rebellious diagonal in section uh, that uh, that diagonal should be uh, should receive all our affection because we need it. Uh, and in plan also we see fragmentations and mysterious uh, uh, you know spaces that need to be discovered. The plan also has uh, uh, contortions and uh, it could have been straight, but it's not. It's not completely, and it has these uh, spaces of uh, conflict. Uh, but not only conflict, but also conciliation. Is is uh, these are these are uh, 
vortexes where you know the communal uh, activities uh, take place uh, especially here uh, such uh, spaces exist also in, um, in in the case of other architects from uh, Stephen Hall uh, to others uh, the, the the facade also is interesting uh, it is a, it is a facade uh, with problems so to speak it's almost a wrinkled facade it has uh, uh, it is very well executed almost amazingly so considering the complexity of you know slight uh, distortions and and disjunctions and uh, uh, it's better it's it's more convincing uh, in a way than the convention center by peter eisenman in columbus ohio it's a smaller building it's true um, so the task perhaps was easier in the case of morphosis uh, the interior also is has its uh, intricacies uh, that that are uh, engaging and interesting i i i, I like them I, I like this building uh, and um, there are all kinds of you see elements here that at first you might not understand what they are but they are they are interesting and so the other facades of the building, uh, you see some probably architects or students in architecture staring at, at, at the spaces uh, with uh, inspecting the spaces with an, uh, a trained uh, eye. Uh, we come back at the exterior. It's, it's, it's very well crafted. And uh, uh, we'll see uh, some uh, um, uh, I used to find a, a word now I cannot find. There are these diagonals, especially here, that cut cut the facades of the buildings. Uh, in uh, you know they are like uh, I don't know how to describe them now. I, I, I seem to be a little bit tired to find the right word. But they are I, 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 uh, they, they, they are accidents on 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 the facade that are maybe necessary. You know just. Look how important, uh, uh, how important such a diagonal is here and here. Uh, you know, you might say it's a superficial graphic element. No, it's more than that. But then we also need graphics in, in architecture. There are all kinds of uh, so-called graphic elements here, quite sophisticated, you know, small, small differences. Why should, that's what I meant by multiplicity and unity. The building does have unity, but it also has multi multiplicity. It is animated by by uh, uh, all kinds of uh, different elements, and uh, uh, this is, I think, a positive thing. Look at this; it is it is very well uh, executed. Even here, little detail. We 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 can uh, we can uh, investigate this facade for a long time and discover new things. It's rich. This is also a good building. I like this building. It's forward looking, it's uh, destined for atmospheric, uh, oceanic, uh, you know, activities. And uh, it has something that connects it with, uh, with the optimism of the Russian avant-garde at the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, I like it. And that A that uh, he seems to like, the last letter to, to uh, assume a special uh, positioning and a special uh, yeah, uh, uh, way of asserting itself. Uh, it is an adventurous, uh, smaller building, but I, I like it. It's, uh, it's, um, uh, and it's, it's, it's uh, representing properly architecturally what its function is. Look at that A. <laughs> Uh, I think he incorporates letters quite well and numbers into his architecture, into their architecture. And look at these balconies from where one, from three floors, three levels could uh, inspect the sky uh, or the, who knows what uh, differently because at three different levels. Uh, Yes, there is inventiveness, there is, uh, there is creativity. Look at this picture. I admired it earlier today and I admire it again here today, uh, later today. It's, it's, it's um, uplifting because it, it shows 
a belief in uh, technology, in, uh, there is optimism, uh, there is a uh, connection between artistic expression and scientific uh, activities and concerns. Now we arrive at the building of Cooper Union in New York, uh, celebrated architecture school, uh, one of the most celebrated. And this is the new building. I am not reading the text now, please forgive me. Uh, this is the building and uh, there is also the older one. Uh, and um, I know this school quite well uh, from the time when uh, John Haydock was the dean. I don't know who the dean is now, but the building by, uh, by Tom Hain is interesting, especially with these uh, strange cuts into the main facade. From the back, it doesn't look like this, but uh, from the front, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is quite engaging. And there are the two layers that the facade has, uh, two skins, so to speak, there is already the light motif of the of the monumental stair that it also becomes kind of an amphitheater uh, where the students, uh, as you can see, um, lay down, uh, study, show each other works and so on. Uh, this is a very good school, Cooper Union, and uh, used to be a free uh, uh, school. Uh, brilliant students entered it uh, uh, once they uh, um, passed uh, an interesting, uh, maybe difficult exam. Um, it's not so easy to come across a school that is free. Uh, I don't know if it still is, but for many years it was free. And it's also interesting, Cooper Union, because it has three uh, you know, departments, uh, if I can call them so, architecture, engineering, and painting. Uh, an interesting uh, triad. So um, a little bit too much whiteness for my taste, uh, uh, the interior, but uh, I almost would welcome some graffitis, but that's my uh, juvenile side. Uh, outside though, there is more uh, non-conformism, I would say. Uh, and I like very much the photographs of the, of the, of the building during construction when it wasn't so white and so clean, when it was more visceral. And uh, I mean, this is my subjective taste. It's, it's uh, Piranesian and there's something also here the, of the drawings of Labia Suits a little bit. Um, and, then, and, and the fact that the photographs are in black and white uh, makes them even more appealing somehow. Artistically speaking, again, the beauty of the of the drawing by Tom Main, and I can again I take my hat off in front of the, his drawings. Uh, this one we saw earlier, and there's now some digital uh, representations, or uh, lots of studies. They are very sophisticated in the office of Memphis of uh, Morphosis. Uh, all kinds of studies. Even here, I see the skip stop. Um, you know, uh, attempt to, to problematize the vertical circulation just as he did, as they did in that federal building. It's an interesting idea. Uh, and uh, a study of sustainability, I don't know exactly what's going on here, but uh, I found this uh, uh, image. Now, the Perro Museum of Nature and Science in uh, Dallas, uh, Texas, a didactic tool for demonstrating scientific principles at work. I will not, forgive me, read the text now, uh, but I could send you the PowerPoint presentation and the recording. This is the building and uh, uh, it has an interesting base, uh, uh, which is undulating as you see it, and it is uh, animated, uh, if I can say so, by the, 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 the stones found in, in this area. And again, the diagonal that is now a signature element in, uh, in his architecture. Um, I would have welcomed, if I am to be sincere, a little bit more uh, tactility, as I said, at the interior, but uh, uh, who knows, maybe the experience uh, of the building, uh, the direct experience would, would uh, make one uh, think differently, feel differently. 
I mean, the, the, this kind of uh, vibrated uh, wall or facade, I would have liked to meet uh, here and there inside as well. Like here, for example, where at least uh, bidimensionally there is some kind of uh, vibration or I don't know how to call it. And also the ceiling here is, uh, is um, dynamic, which I, which I like. But there are these, uh, these, these um, um, details, if I call them so, which are graphically convincing. They are even more interesting because they have color. Uh, it, it is nice that there are such so-called accidents. Also, these cultural elements suspended from the ceiling are nice too. They are, they are lights. It's a lighting system, but it's quite interesting. Uh, so uh, it's an interesting building. Too bad again that the, the stamp of someone is sensitive, uh, uh, you know, ruined uh, this, this this page with his sketch. But I, I think that his sketches are different. Uh, when he was younger, he was more uh, uh, gentle, I would say. Here I feel an anxiety that I didn't notice in his earlier drawings. So I guess the passage of time does have an effect on, on, on all of us. Even here, there is more, uh, more tension, more uh, almost anxiety here as well. And also he seems to be in a rush. It, 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 is a diff it has a different feeling than, than, than the earlier uh, drawings, although it's still a, a, a good uh, graphic work. Here we see the so-called global systems organization. To me, this language is a little bit uh, dry, uh, but uh, uh, who knows? Uh, and now the Bill and Melinda Gates Hall uh, at Cornell University from 2013, uh, activating educational spaces with movement, light, and transparency. Uh, uh, please allow me not to read this text. Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go through some uh, pictures. It is an interesting building uh, that, that employs, again, uh, different skins, uh, architectural skins, uh, uh, both outside of the building and inside uh, veils, in a way, and uh, discrete uh, uh, colors. Uh, and uh, I, I like this, where you, know, you don't have just grayness and smoothness, so you have something else as well. There is even a monumentality, there are these, uh, of course, uh, there is a certain level of stage design here, I would say, but uh, it is an attempt to monumentalize uh, and, and bring something sculptural, uh, you know, to the building. Uh, a very interesting, uh, it's very interesting what is happening here. Uh, I don't think there are many buildings in the world that, that would uh, create such a, uh, such a, I don't know how to call it. It's both an architecture and the landscape architecture. Uh, The facade has, like in other cases, and we'll see, we are approaching the end, so please, uh, if you are so kind, uh, be a little bit patient. I think we'll, feel, we'll, we'll end the presentation in 10, 15 minutes. Uh, the, the, he problematizes the plain glass facade with these uh, uh, ornamental uh, elements that uh, have uh, uh, maybe a function of some kind of brisole, but they also have a an ornamental function. Uh, I like this uh, this image and the, the 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 powerful color here underneath. You know, some kind of orange red, which complements well. Or, or uh, yeah, the the grayness, the metallic look of the building. I like also the artworks that are incised or graphically uh, inserted into these uh, walls. Uh, it's important to have uh, art incorporated into the into the architecture. Wasn't this the dream also of uh, because we talked today about the Bauhaus, uh, the doctoral school, and uh, yeah, 
this was the dream of Gropius at the beginning to bring together the architects, the, 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 the painters, the sculptors um, to work together. Okay, another building, the Emerson College in Los Angeles from 2014. Uh, college campus condensed into an urban site. I think here there was some kind of, uh, maybe around that time or a little earlier, they did the, 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 the project for the skyscraper in, uh, in, in Paris. And that building should have been built and I regret very much it was canceled for the time being. But uh, the reason I mentioned this is, is because uh, uh, the building has a site that uh, connects with the, um, the, uh, the arc, uh, the arched building at La Défense in Paris. Uh, otherwise, the building is very different. Uh, 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 maybe not so much inside compared to other buildings by, uh, by, by them, by him. But here also there are unconventional curves, uh, trajectories, uh, passages, bridges. Uh, it, it, it is a building that, that proclaims, as in other buildings by Morphosis, uh, the importance of, of dialogue, of communication, of interaction, uh, and of a dynamic uh, environment. I was referring to this, that it's almost an extruded, extruded uh, uh, Larc de la Défense uh, in Paris. Uh, even the dimensions are probably not very different, uh, with the exception that while in Paris, uh, uh, Peter Rice uh, created an interesting uh, canopy here. Here we have uh, architectural spaces that are you know, complex. But it is impossible for me to look at it and not uh, remember the, uh, you know, uh, the, the arch that was built uh, at La Défense in, in Paris. Otherwise, there are very interesting things here. This, uh, this uh, skin of the building uh, and the, uh, I mean, just, just, to, just to imagine it is, uh, is uh, remarkable, but to also draw it and build it uh, is uh, that that kind of richness of the skin of the building uh, i wish was more present uh, inside as well uh, you know uh, an engaging uh, desk here uh, in the lobby and uh, i know uh, tom main had an exhibition at uh, at uh, centre georges pompidou in paris where, if I remember correctly, he displayed uh, the, the models of their works and so on under the, under the, under the floor. Uh, so you could see them from above through the floor, at least some of them. I, I, I remember reading something like this. I didn't, I didn't see that exhibition. Um, so there is there, there are dualities all the time in, in his work, in their works. Here we have some kind of a impressionistic architecture. Uh, here there is a certain smoothness. And this was also present in, uh, in, in the tower in Paris and will arrive there very soon. Now we are still in Los Angeles, uh, the Emerson College, uh, which originated, I think, I mean, uh, the main uh, Emerson College is in Boston, I think. Even here we have the duality. There is one, one kind of uh, inner elevation here and another one here. Dualities uh, are, are always uh, or often can be engaging if they do not collapse into an unresolvable conflict. Drawings by Tom Main again. Uh, I see the same kind of stamp. Uh, I'm surprised. Uh, this is not in Dallas, it's in Los Angeles. Who knows? Maybe this was, I don't know. I don't even want to think about it. But now we arrive at, in my opinion, uh, uh, 
at a building that uh, that should not be shown actually I, I i almost have a very hard time to believe it was built by morphosis and by by tomain is this one i with the exception of some uh, diagonals here and here but what is this thing here uh, I couldn't believe my eyes. I, I, I uh, go quickly over this building. I, 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 I refuse to accept that this was built by Tom, uh, Tom Main and, and, and Morphosis. It's too static and too, I'm sorry, I, I don't want to be harsh, but uh, uh, this building doesn't uh, engage my imagination, uh, and, uh, certainly not in a positive way. But this building does. This building, I regret very much it was not built. And let's hope, who knows, although I know there are plans for something else in its place. But this building would have been probably the most interesting skyscraper in the United States and in, in Europe. And perhaps one of the most interesting in the world ever. Uh, Drawing on the power of parametric scripting, anyway, the design of the far tower gathers disparate programmatic, physical, and infrastructural elements. In an interview, he said he was inspired by the sensuality of Paris. But but there are you see here, this is not the Emerson College, but is not very different uh, in terms of proportions from what we saw in Los Angeles. Although it doesn't have, of course, the the length. Or the depth of the one in in, uh, in in Los Angeles. This is the tower uh, that uh, Tom Main and Morphosis proposed, and it's just too bad that that it was not built, because it would have been. Uh, and I think they won a competition for it. It was it was uh, ready to start the construction, and for some reason it didn't. And 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 you see, uh, it's bad because it would have been exceptional in the context of all the other and these are banal this one is not banal and you see that it has a duality here as well this facade is flat and smooth and this one is organic and sinuous and sensuous and and this duality exists uh, in, at and morphosis uh, you see it it's, this is almost like it is a section through a building that was uh, like this all over. Well, it was not. A interesting uh, tension between one side and the other. Uh, there are many drawings. I only show a few. Here is another digital uh, image of the building. And, uh, and again, it's very, very sad the, the French didn't build it. They lost a great occasion to have a very original skyscraper. Uh, um, what can you do? There are, uh, uh, unfortunately, unhappy uh, events. Uh, architecture, in order to be built, as you know, uh, needs uh, approvals and signatures and money from various sources and people and so on. It's, it's, it is what it is. And here we see the, the height of the building compared with, with the Tour Eiffel. Um, it started from a higher level, but it went not above. This was a gesture, I think, of, of, of respect towards uh, Tour Eiffel, uh, something not too many builders have. Uh, but it seems uh, Tom Main and Morphosis did. And now uh, uh, this is uh, an, an interesting project. I don't know if it, if it will be built. Uh, I don't know what the infamous Viper Room is site uh, but the, the building is, uh, is uh, uh, almost uh, irreverential, uh, and I almost see a viper here. Uh, it's, it's, some, it's, it's supposed to be a hotel, and it's a hotel that somehow uh, feeds on this uh, Cartesian structure, which is a sum of gardens. Uh, here also there seems to be something uh, awkward, that the gardens are located uh, or housed uh, in, in, a, in a Cartesian structure, while the house of man uh, is uh, taking this uh, audacious uh, uh, shape. Uh, uh, really a, a provocative uh, project. And um, who knows? Maybe it will be built, maybe not. I don't know. 
the pandemic uh, did change many things and uh, will continue to change many things. So uh, some projects probably will not come into being. Now uh, we are approaching the end, uh, five more minutes at the most, the colon one and only tower in South Korea. Morphosis marked the recent opening. I don't know when this recent, uh, it's something very recent. This uh, new research and development facility the leading textile manufacturing company in South uh, Korea. Uh, and uh, this is the building. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a building that uh, is dramatic. And it has a, a rebirth of ornament, but at a huge scale. This just one element, you'll see it's, it's bigger than a human being. It's, it's, it's huge. And, uh, and uh, I mean, you see here, uh, this is the lady in red contemplating uh, the outside, but look at these uh, strange uh, uh, ornaments, these elements that are uh, quite, uh, quite big and you will, you will see them in a, in a video, uh, how big and monumental they are. But it is an interesting uh, architectural curtain towards the outside, if I am to call it so. It is, I think, an attempt of architecture to, 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 to communicate through its skin uh, desires that otherwise are hidden behind the, you know, the, the, the common uh, uh, glass curtain wall or uh, whatever. So it, it, the skin seems to be almost exasperated by uh, I mean, the skin seems to represent a desire of the building to, 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 to assert itself through the skin uh, uh, in, a, in a more uh, engaging, interesting, uh, even idiosyncratic way. Uh, this is a more recent phenomenon, I think. And it can be found in uh, various architects, not just uh, morphosis. And now we have a few more images. We are building new ways of working. This is what uh, two collaborators of Tom Main at Morphosis uh, stated in a recent interview. Um, Morphosis explores XR and the future of design technologies. Uh, they, 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 uh, um, they, they are not afraid to assume uh, uh, you know, the role of pioneers in the field of uh, using uh, high technology to explore new ways of doing architecture. Uh, they have, I think, even a, a department within their office, and it's not such a large office, but they still have a space for, uh, for activities that have to do with research, with, uh, with searching for new things, and uh, bravo to them, I think, for this. So the office is not just a, a space for production, but it's also one for research and for education, for knowing, not just for doing, but also for knowing. Uh, and uh, I think more offices uh, should do this uh, to combine the art of, uh, to combine uh, production with, uh, with education, with knowing, with discovering. Uh, it's important, I think, uh, very, very important. And art itself is coming back to the building, as we can see. And uh, the facade of the building also becomes embroidered in a, you know, in a way that could be surprising. Uh, there is geometry, but here every element is different. And something like this, you cannot easily do with analog means. You have to have the sophistications of, uh, uh, of the digital technology. Uh, and uh, here we see one of the elements of the facade of the building in, uh, in South Korea uh, in, a, in, a, in a video that uh, shows the, the monumentality of this single element, which composes a facade that is uh, quite large. And again, we are looking at just one element. It is the same element, uh, well, here taking this shape, that element that made me think of the multiplicity in unity that I mentioned. That was 
what we saw on that facade. This is what we see here, multiplicity in unity. All these elements give hands. They, 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 they like in the dance by Matisse, they, they dance together, so to speak, on, uh, on the facade of the building. It's, I think, uh, a metaphor for what uh, uh, Morphosis tried uh, over the years to do, and through Morphosis, of course, uh, uh, Tom Main. Uh, and uh, uh, here we see an abstracted uh, uh, image of the same quest, I mean, a, a moving image of the same quest for the unknown. Uh, I read somewhere that uh, in at Sci Arc, they have this uh, uh, um, um, saying or this, uh, I don't know what it is, a uh, motto of the school or uh, 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 to hell with regulations, we are going for the unknown. Here we are seeing Morphosis and Tom Main going for the unknown. And uh, any exploration has dangers and uh, failures sometimes, but we need them in our quest for, uh, for that uh, before mentioned uh, unknown. And uh, unfortunately, this image and the next one were supposed to move, and for some reason do not move here. This is, uh, all, uh, the, the next image will be the last one. This image, what I, I like to imagine in this image, uh, uh, some kind of an aspiration that Tom Main had and has, and through him uh, morphosis, or vice versa, him through morphosis towards light. And I, I see almost, I mean, maybe I speculate now, but I, I, I feel tempted to see uh, a longing here that is uh, that has uh, perhaps even uh, uh, some uh, spiritual overtones. These hands that are uh, uh, almost imploring uh, light and uh, the above, but sh maybe I shouldn't be carried away by such romantic uh, interpretations. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. That was fantastic. As usual.